Well, it happens to be this year's prize-winning novel, David Story's Savile. <laughs> In it, Story doesn't hesitate to enter into competition with one of the greatest of modern masters, one of the most famous of 20th century novels. Despite this, the new and the familiar are fused in pristine freshness. Among other things, David Story's Savile reminds us, if we need reminding, that one meaning of the word novel is new. And now David Story is presented with the 1976 Booker Prize, the Statuette and the £5,000 by Michael Kelly. If I could, first of all, give you this emblem, and then, and then also an envelope with the prize in monetary form in it. Um, but above all, I would like to I congratulate you and acclaim all that you've done for all of us. I think by the work of hours or months or however much you did on it. Thank and you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I've just been told uh, <clears throat> that the, uh, the culprit or the victim is supposed to make a, a speech, which I didn't uh, understand was a usual formality. Uh, Authors usually being very modest characters. The moment you let them loose in public, they go mad, you see. <laughs> because the last time I was in a bookish, in fact, the only time I was in a booker list, the last time, uh, it went to the wrong novel, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it went to John Berger, and you see what happened there. <clears throat> he not only gave half the money away, he made a political speech. Well, <clears throat> our eminent politician has. Yes. <laughs> no, I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> but I, I noticed also Lord Donaldson, our brilliant Minister of Arts, is also uh, conspicuously absent, I take it, who's let the magnificent public lending rights bill flash through his hands. <laughs> There are those people who wish to emulate Lord Eccles, but I think that's a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> but we have his... Uh, his count... <clears throat> <laughs> we have his equally brilliant counterpart here, who I've just converted to total conviction to comprehensive education. <laughs> And you'll know, know that he is a hypocrite if he ever goes against that company. <laughs> so watch him and his pals. But uh, I have nothing to say about literature because my uh, superstition about artists and writers is that they should keep their mouths shut. Uh, and one or two other people too. But. Uh, as I say, they usually go mad and say ridiculous things. And I think artists are as big an idiot as anybody else in terms of their private view of society and life. Um, I don't wish to keep you too long from your La Mousse de Café <clears throat> Amandine. It sounds very exciting. And uh, since it's all been televised as well, I've been told we're in a hurry. <laughs> So on the, on the whole, it's a rather brilliant combination, you might say, of the ridiculous and the sublime. But um, I appreciate the check. <laughs> because the business I am in, the checks you get don't often... Uh, well, the signatures are usually in doubt. But thank you very much indeed to the judges, and thank you too for giving so much time to literature in general. I think it must be extremely tedious to read 66 novels. Uh, I think novel reading is a very hard business in any case. 
not quite, a, it's a bit longer than poems, isn't it? <laughs> <coughs> you can write poems a bit quicker, can't you? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think poetry comes out a bit faster. But thank you very much indeed. I won't keep you any longer from your pudding. <laughs> thank you.